Um, Timmy, look, will you and, and Lassie wait out here first, please? We'll just be a minute. Okay, Mom. All right. Well, hello there. Are you getting your shopping done? saved my baby's life. I, it was my fault. I just wasn't watching. I, I'm sorry. Well, Lassie may be badly hurt. You better get her to Doc Weaver right away. Thank heaven he's close by. Well, I, I'll get the car. Don't worry, Lassie. You'll be all right. Taking us. To be x-rayed. Excuse me, ma'am. You must be the Martins, the owner of the dog that saved the little girl? Uh, yes, we are. Well, I'm Al Bronson, reporter for the Capital City Spectator. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I brought you something, young fella. This. I got most of the story from Mrs. Bailey. What's your dog's name, son? Lassie. And this is her present. Well, Lassie, that's a good name for a good dog. What does the vet say about her condition? Oh, uh, I'm sure she'll be all right. Of course she will. Well, Mrs. Martin, if you don't mind, I think I'll just stick around for a while, huh? Yeah, you go sit down. Say, Timmy. Did you ever hear a story of a dog named Balto? There's a big statue of him in Central Park in New York City. A statue of a dog? Mm-hmm. You see, he was a dog hero, too. Now, the children in Nome, that's a city in Alaska, were terribly sick. And the only medicine was 650 miles away. Well, now, uh, this was snow country. The only way to get that medicine to Nome was by dog sled. So they... Got teams of dogs, and they arranged for relays, and Balto was to carry the next to the last. Then a blinding storm came up, and he never met the team that was to relieve him. But half frozen and weary, Balto carried that precious diphtheria serum to Nome. And he saved all those children's lives. I bet Lassie would have done that, too. I can't tell you, Timmy. We'll have to wait until the x-rays are developed. As soon as I see the plates, I'll call you. She's moving. You're gonna be all right. Well, now, looks like Lassie's ready to speak for herself. Let me take her home, please. That's where she belongs. You might as well. She'll be a lot happier there. Will you call as soon as you've seen the x-rays? The first thing. I'll wheel her down the hall while you drive the car around, Paul. We enjoyed your story, Mr. Bronson. You must come out to the farm and see us sometime. Thanks, I'll do that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Timmy, you take good care of that dog, and remember to read The Spectator. Your name is going to be in it tomorrow. Gosh! And Lassie's, too? Mm-hmm. And big headlines, just like Balto. Gee, thanks. And thanks for finding this, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and Lassie, Timmy. Yeah, 
Yeah, that way we can keep an eye on her. The lass will be happy, too, because she'll be close to us all. She's gonna be fine. Mike wasn't gonna give last year a present until Christmas, but we thought it might cheer her up. Gosh, she doesn't act so good. Will she be able to go caroling with us tomorrow night? Of course she will. Boy, will we have a time. First, we'll stop at Mrs. Woodruff's. She makes that swell mince pie, remember? I sure do. Then we'll go to Willie Brewster's. They always have hot crawlers. I had two of them last year. Then we'll visit the Simmons and fill up on gingerbread Santa Clauses. I hope Mrs. Brown has those candied apples. Boy, I can hardly wait. We'll be by about sundown. You and Lassie will be ready. We will. Bye. Bye, Boomer. Bye, night. Bye, Boomer. Bye, Mrs. Martin. Christmas is the very best part of the whole year. Don't you think so, Mom? Yes, dear. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. I want Lassie to enjoy it, too. She will, dear. We want to get a nice full tree. We better get started before there's nothing left but stumps. Yeah, and I got a beauty spotted over by the huckleberry patch. What do you say, boy? The fresh air will do you a lot of good. You go ahead, dear. I'll keep an eye on Lassie for you. All right, then I'll go. I'll get my coat. It'll keep his mind off Lassie, at least for a while. Remember? Last year you said I'd be big enough this year to carry the axe. <laughs> we sure did, and you sure can. Bye, Mom. Come on, boy. Bye. Get well, Lassie. Please get well. Timmy needs you. And so do we. to be any change. Huh? Have uh, you seen the x-rays? Brought them with me. What do they show? There's definite pressure there. Yeah. See this light area here? Mm -hmm. It's in a bad spot. Doc Weaver's here. Timmy, maybe you better take the axe in the barn before you come in. Okay. This other one here, same thing, a different angle. Paul, Uncle PG? Doc, 
What's the word? It's not good. How bad? She's got to have an operation. What does that mean? Well, that means I've got to fix Lassie up. Make her well again. Oh, I got a copy of the Capital City Spectator here, Timmy. Your name is in it. Uncle Petrie, why don't you take Timmy in the other room and read them all about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, I I'd sure like to read that story myself. Timmy, what do you say you and me go in the parlor here and read what it says, huh? Now, here it is. Courageous dog saves child's life. Betty Bailey. There's one thing you should know about this operation. It's almost never performed on dogs. Well, why is that? Yes, Frank, why? Well, because in the cases of brain injuries to animals, 99 times out of 100, it's a lot more merciful if you just, uh, well... That doesn't apply to Lassie. We want everything done for her. Paul, I've never performed an operation like this. As a matter of fact, there's only one man who has, as far as I can find out. Who is he? What's his name? Dr. Watkins. He's a research veterinarian connected with the state college. Well, can't we get him on the phone? That was my first thought, but I couldn't reach him. He's on his way to Lafayette to spend the Christmas holidays with his family. What do we do? Well, we can wait until tomorrow and see if her condition improves. And if it doesn't, you'll have to perform the operation yourself. You both know that I'll do my best. But you should also know that that might not be good enough. Christmassy. Yeah, and we, uh, uh, we ought to be thinking about getting that tree decorated. How about it, boy? You, uh, ready to start on the tree? I would like to wait until Lassie can watch. Well, uh, just as you say, but we gotta have some place to put the presents, you know. Timmy, um, maybe you could give me a hand stringing the popcorn and cranberries. And the string already. Put a piece of white popcorn and then a red cranberry. <laughs> I used to love doing this when I was a little girl. Say, it's uh, it's almost time for the weather reports. I'll get the radio and bring it in here. Listen. It will be generally fair in Capital City with the possibility of snow flurries in the late afternoon. And here's a news item for you good people of Calverton. Lassie, the heroic collie who saved the three-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Bailey from being struck by a truck and was herself hit by the vehicle, is reported to be resting comfortably at the Martin Farm outside of Calverton. Every parent and every dog lover should say a little prayer for the recovery of this brave animal who is willing to give up her life to save a child. Greater love hath no animal. Here's a devout and heartfelt get well and Merry Christmas, Lassie, from all of us. The weather through the rest of the country is... I guess just about everybody in the whole world heard that, didn't they, Mom? Yes, I guess they did. Just about everybody in the whole world. Of course. The radio. What are you doing? Oh, Jenny. Jenny, w could you please get me the radio station in Capital City right away? It's uh, station KFQZ. I couldn't sleep. Neither could I. Can't I stay in here just a little while? We'll both stay. I'll get a blanket for us. Dear 
God, would you please get in touch with Santa Claus and tell him the only present I want is for Lassie to get well. Thank you. Amen. Dr. Watkins? No, none. I don't think we dare wait any longer. How can we help, Frank? We'll have to use this as an operating room. The kitchen table will be all right. Well, I'll get some sheets and some towels. Fine. You're going to be all right, Lassie. Because Doc Weaver loves you, and we all love you. And because I said a very special prayer last night. This the Martin place? Yes, sir. Are you Mr. Dr. Watkins? I sure am. I've driven all night to get here. Mom, Dad, Dr. Watkins is here. He got here, he got here. I'm Dr. Weaver. We're glad you got here in time, Doctor. You heard the broadcast, then? Yes. This is Ruth and Paul Martin. Hello, Doctor. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Doctor, brief me on this, will you? Well, she was hit by a truck. Here are the x-rays. Well, folks, uh, I'm sure it'll be much easier on your nervous systems if you wait in the other room. Gotta make our Christmas wreaths, you know. You remember this? Yes, and that'd be for Christmas, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. than eagles, his coursers, they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night.
Well, that's all I can do. She's a healthy dog. Maybe that'll carry her through. How do you do? Well, we finished. Can I see her? Sure you can. Will she be all right? She came through the operation all right. Now we'll just have to wait and see. Christmas, Doctor. Thank you. Well, I'm glad Jerry, to see that you're well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You did it, Doctor Watkins. You made a will. That's my best Christmas present. You're a real Santa Claus. I'm glad I could do it, Timmy. And now I've got to go. I have three grandchildren who are expecting Santa Claus, and I want to be there. Oh, Doctor, it was my little girl that Lassie saved, and. I'd like to pay you for this wonderful thing you've done. Well, thank you, but it wasn't entirely my skill. The prayers of these good people, the faith of a little boy, something more. At any rate, I've been paid in something far better than money. Bless you, Doctor. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas after all. Merry Christmas, Paul. Merry Christmas, dear. Merry Christmas, Timmy. Merry Christmas, Lassie. And a very Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> <laughs>